Hey everybody, welcome back to yet another Deathmatch cast, and today I have the pleasure of casting with Nobody AoE. This is part of the Deathmatch Legacy Cup 2 tournament, with Nelly and Rubenstock playing off against Spring and Slam in this match. Do you want to introduce the civilizations, Nobody? The civilizations we have are Persians and Khmer, so we should see a lot of elephants this game. Over in the top right side, we have Slam as the Persians, and in the bottom right, we have Spring playing as the Khmer. You can introduce the other two civilizations, J-Red. So, in the red we have Nelly, and he's playing as the Persians, and his ally is Rubenstock, who is playing as the Khmer. And we can see Slam getting a nice vil pick right there. And these two civilizations are very interesting because they're both similar in that they have powerful elephants, they have scorpions and siege ramps, but their one main big difference is that the Khmer creates their elephants from the stables, but the Persians create it from the castle. And what this means is that in the early game we'll have the Khmer being a little bit faster to get their army out. Yeah, it's, it's, these civilizations play a lot alike. Their elephants are pretty similar, although slightly different. Uh, the Khmer, uh, on the one hand, have the weaker elephants, although, as you said, they're faster to get out. But they also have the stronger scorpions, and scorpions play a prominent role in, uh, in Persian elephant wars as well. So I'm kind of interested to see how, this, uh, how these civilizations might play differently and similarly at the same time, and who might be the stronger civilization. Yep, I'm, I would predict that Khmer will be far stronger in the early game because if you look at uh, Spring, he already has several elephants out. I don't know, there's about 10 here, while the Persians, they don't have elephants out at all. Yeah, already the Khmer players, so many elephants out on the field, and the Persians play are getting up their castles, um, so trying to take a little bit of map control. Um, not a lot of army from the Persians players so far. It looks like they're going with a more defensive play style, getting out a lot of halves to counter out the early elephants. Uh, of course, the scorpions are pretty slow at getting across the map, so don't have to worry about that until your castles are up, hopefully, if you're the Persians player. Yes, that's definitely true. And I think that something very interesting about the Khmer is that we all know their scorpions shoot two bolts. And what that means is that their army can be a little more balanced than the Persians, but the Persians is going to be a little... Uh, it's going to be stronger and more brute force-ish, you could say. Who needs balance when you are uh, when you have the war elephant with 600 HP on them? Double the HP of a uh, battle elephant. I don't think you need any other units. No. No. If you add halberdiers sometimes, that can be good because you're taking more cost-efficient trades. And you have to remember that you start with a certain amount of resources and you want to use those resources wisely. So you can see at minute five, they're already starting to place town centers and create their economies. But you are true that those that the ideal situation would be mostly war elephants and a few scorpions. Spring taking an early lead on the bottom side, really trying to push uh, Nilly. Nilly's got three castles up in the area, was denied on one of this, these town centers. And mostly scorpions from Nilly, not really a lot of uh, a lot of bulk in the front of his army. He actually sent half of his army north. They were trying to double slam, but he's actually regretting the decision and sending his hounds back. Yeah, he's going to have to send those back. That's going to hurt him, definitely. If uh, Spring is able to really press this advantage, I guess you could say. And Ruben stopped coming to the south to try to support his ally. Uh, Spring, just with so much army at this early stage of the game, however, no heavy siege, no rams, no trebuchets to be able to take down these castles. So that should allow Nilly to recover a little bit, though. He's going to lose a ton of health to these scorpions, though, oh my gosh. Yeah, that is crazy, and what you said about the siege rams is so true. You absolutely have to add siege rams to your elephant army, and this is that way you can... Otherwise, your elephant army is going to be able to be stopped and they can stall it. But the siege ram is really the key to letting your army be unstoppable. Rubenstock, a lot of the players focusing more in the middle. On Golden Pit, a lot of the golds are in the middle of the map, so control over the middle is definitely going to be crucial. Uh, right now, just Rubenstock has so much army as well. He's already trebbing down one of these castles. Uh, how is Slam going to defend against this? I don't know. Uh, Slam is playing as the Persian, so he can always try to attack those trebs with some paladins, which is probably one of the main advantages of the Persians, which is that they have paladins and heavy camels. But if he's able to defend those trebs, I don't think it's going to work too well. And in the south, the Spring is still not again able, not not able to push through the solid castle defense by Nilly, and this is giving Nilly some chances to uh, to rebuild. Yes, if you look at, that is definitely true, if you look at the trade of the two teams though, you can see that Spring and Slam have already started their trade up, 
but there's a small paladin raid which kind of slowed down spring a little bit and Reuben started trade but not really Nelly well Nelly's sending a villager to start trade now and you got to get trade up by about 10 minutes and so they're a little late with that and that could hurt them if they let if they don't get that trade up fast so one of the castles from Slam going down, he's going to attempt to defend against the trebuchets of Rubenstock by building trebuchets of his own. However, they are going to get picked off by these elephants as there's no more standing army for Slam. Slam only down to 40 military. Rubenstock is up to 80 military. Slam needs to pump out as much military as possible, but he's out of food. That's one of the big things about these civilizations. They're really food heavy civilizations. So only 60 villagers and not enough food for Slam. Yep. If you look at how the players have started their economies, I'm kind of liking a little bit better how Nelly and Rubenstock have done it. They have way more farms in the back. And then Slam does have some farms, but in spraying a little bit. But you really, with the Persians and even the Khmer, you got to get that food eco out as fast as you can. Once again, looking at the fight in the north, it, for some reason, I don't see uh, Rubenstock really going in. And he, it looks a little distracted with the halves, but he needs to go in and just take out those, uh, those trebuchets. I'm sure he can get it with all the elephants that he has. But here comes a few more elephants from uh, Slam, as we mentioned before. Double the HP on a Persian War Elephant. However, I don't think it's going to matter too much against these overwhelming numbers from Rubenstock. Yes, that is, it is true that the Persian elephants, they are actually cleaning up the elephants. Oh my god, I'm actually wrong. <laughs> It's yeah. strong. Yeah, it's, it's kind of surprised me when I looked at these elephants recently how strong the war elephants are. But the problem was that Rubenstock wasn't using his scorpions at that time to deal the extra bonus damage. If he had moved those forward just a little bit, I think that could have gone a little differently. And all of a sudden, suddenly the, uh, the war elephants of Slam pushing back and actually taking down the trebuchets of Rubenstock. I was wrong at how, how, uh, how strong these Persian elephants are. They're much stronger than I thought. And this might be that stage of the game. We saw the advantage some of these Khmer players had, both Spring and uh, Rubenstock. However, it looks like the Persian players might be uh, might be getting developed and starting to take over now. Yep, once they get developed, they definitely are a stronger civilization in my point of view. If you look over at the bottom, Nelly is barely starting to get his trade started. And Spring, if he just put a few elephants over there he could definitely stop this trade from starting which would really hurt uh nilly's team especially because they don't have a solid grip on the middle yet yeah good position for uh for spring and slam despite being down in the score i'm really liking the um the trade from these guys and the amount of military that they have on the field both those factors combined really puts them in a good position as well as control over the center goals yep you got to get that the golds aren't that important unless your opponent doesn't have trade up. Because if your opponent has trade up and you deny them the golds, that's going to be super important. But once trade gets up, the gold piles aren't the best source of gold because of how easy they are to raid at times. I wonder if any of these players will consider, uh, any of the Khmer players will consider the Ballista Elephant. Haven't seen some uh, any any yet. Uh, they would be a little bit more beefy. Uh, in the south, though, Spring is pushing, and uh, Nilly and Rubenstock, they really need to mount a solid defense. Yeah, what you were saying about the Ballista Elephants, I don't think we're going to see those. And the reason for that is because their damage output is not nearly as high as the Scorpion damage output, because I think they fire a little slower, and because the projectiles just don't attack as much. And I don't even know if the Ballista Elephants have the all-important bonus damage versus the Elephants, so I don't think we're going to see those today. Also, another thing about the Scorpions is that they cost wood, and I think the Ballista Elephants cost food, correct me on this if I'm wrong, and you have to save your food for your Battle Elephants or your War Elephants. It's so interesting. Why, why, why is Spring's trade cards running into the middle of the map? Is there a market that I'm not aware of? Oh yeah, Spring made a market in his own base, actually probably to uh, maybe to buy food, I'm not quite sure. But uh, they're actually running it through the middle of the map, it's kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, that's a little ridiculous. That's... I don't know, I didn't see if Spring did a market opening, but otherwise... Yeah, he, did. he did? Okay, well... He needs to definitely delete that, because he's losing. This is a bunch of gold he's losing in those trade cards. So he definitely needs to fix that. Snap, Snap now pinging the uh, north side of that crater. It looks like uh, it looks like he's won a critical battle there. Uh, Spring is moving his scorpions up to the north. For whatever reason, down in the south, not a lot of action. They decided to both focus on the north more, more so. Looks like Rubenstock is uh, solidifying his position with two castles. 
And if you can get this castle down from Slam, could go right into the trade line. Yep. If one, if you get into that trade line, what that does is it stops your opponent's economy for a little bit, anyways, and that is super important because you also have to remember that each trade cart is a much bigger investment than each villager because they cost a hundred gold. And talking about defenses, Nelly, he's starting to get his castles up, but Slam, I mean Spraying, really has missed his opportunity to do some major, major damage to the economies of the opposing team because they have not raided the bottom trade or really even tried to pressure it at all, and that's going to come back to hurt them in the rear. Yeah, now only now Nelly getting those two castles up, so there was plenty of opportunity for Spring to do a lot of damage onto Nelly, especially by taking out a few of his castles. But we just didn't see that uh, early siege from, uh, from Spring, so that is a big missed opportunity on him. Yes, definitely. If you look in the middle, it seems that uh, it's kind of stabled out a little bit, and Nilly does have a little bit of gold income over here. They're trying to raid it, but I guess that shows that they're trying to really focus on defending because the Rubenstock and Nilly are a little bit more on the offensive now, is what it seems and uh, Spring and Slam are now focusing on the north, which I don't think that's the correct decision at this point. Well, right now, Spring and Slam just about double the army of, uh, of Nilly and Rubenstock. However, Nilly's got a mega boom going on here. He's got all the way up to 130 villages. Look at how many farms he has. If they can hold out just a little bit longer, I think that uh, Nilly and Rubenstock should be set, set up for a better late game. Yes, I definitely agree. I think this shows the experience that these two players have with setting up their economies because it's really important to get a very strong economy going so that way you can field your super powerful elephant units and i think that the other team are a little slower to do that and that could hurt them looks like slam not making the same mistake that uh, spring made earlier on he's got three trebuchets out trying to work on a lot of these production buildings what uh what slam really needs to do though is he needs to get into that farm space and uh if you neutralize the farms of Rubenstock, then you can't make any more elephants. So he needs to push in as soon as possible. Yes, if Slam just made a few paladins, or maybe even Hussars if he doesn't have gold, but I think his, his gold's fine. He should make a few paladins to do that, and that would definitely help them a lot. <laughs> Nobody going in with a sneak attack, all of his gold miners running into the castle of Spring. I don't know where they're going. They're looking for another gold mine, apparently. Let's oh, I'd be curious if these villagers of Nilly actually got past these defenses and were able to do something. It looks like going completely undetected through the middle of the map. Yeah, because, you know, in Deathmatch, there's just so many different things you have to focus on. You have to look at your army and focusing on your economy, but you got to look at the mini map every now and then because these red villagers, at first I thought they were just moving they to a different in. build pile. But, I mean, they're, they're going in, and it looks like they're actually on a mission here. I wonder if this was a legit uh, a legit strategy from Nilly. He actually sent those villagers out, or he just realized his village is in the middle of slam space and go, hell work with it. And now he's dropping even some guard towers into the middle of the trade line. If you clicked on the villagers, you could see that they were called builders, so they were definitely sent over here on purpose. And look at this. These guard towers. Persians do not have good towers, but they're right in this trade. But that should get cleaned up very soon. It really should get cleaned up, because, I mean, you gotta clean that up. I really think the colors are playing uh, playing a big role here. Just uh, Millie is blending so well with the purple on the mini map. Uh, uh, that's pretty crazy. It even might get up some more archer ranges and more stables. Is this gonna be your huge thorn in the side as these guard towers take down so much of the trade? You can win the game just by taking out the trade of the opponent. Yeah, this is exactly what Spring or Slam should have done earlier to Nelly. But I mean, this is this is ridiculous. This should never happen. And I don't know what you're saying about the minimap, but it, it, that looks that's red as day if you look at well, it. Well, now, now it's larger. It's kind of like a uh, kind of like a cancer. Now that the cancer's grown, you can actually see it. Yeah. Uh, I wonder how long it takes for these players to actually realize that they're losing all of their trade in their own base. Heavy cavalry archers coming out from the Persians just to help raid that trade a little bit better, and they're losing so much trade right now. It doesn't matter what's going on in the, in, in the other side. The players trading off about evenly, but. Uh, unbeknownst to uh, Spring and Slam, they're actually losing all their trade. Yeah, it was so funny because they've just cleaned up Rubenstock. I mean, Rubenstock still has some of his economy in the back, but he's lost so many buildings. But if Rubenstock can just hold on against these uh, War Elephants of Slam, that's really going to hurt uh, Spring and Slam's team in the back. And I think they've finally noticed they're sending some Halberdiers, but just look at all that dead trade. That is crazy.
few elephants from Spring making their way over, but it's just, it's too much at this stage. And a few elephants from Slam. I think just Nilly could just go for as ma many trade cards as possible here. Um, down to 17 trade for Spring and Slam's team, and a total of 60 trade for Nilly and Rubenstock's trade. Um, so that's a huge, huge difference. Yeah, that's very different. And one thing I really liked about Nilly's plan was that he did not attack the markets. People oftentimes think, oh, you got to take out the markets to stop the trade. But you have to remember that you're only delaying the trade if you do that, because you're not killing any of those gold carts that cost gold to recreate. And they're all going to be piled back and they're going to e be easy to micro back to a market. So this has been a, v a very effective move. Even Slam pulling a lot of his villagers from his farms, not able to catch the uh, fast cavalry archers from Nilly. Great, great um, choice of army here in this one particular situation. You never really would make a person's cavalry archers, but they're working great here. Oh no, never. Yeah, this is, this is ridiculous. I mean, Nilly has no right for this strategy to work. This strategy should never work. But sometimes you need a little creativity in Age of Empires. That's all you need. Oh, that's all you need. Over on the other side, though, I think that Slam is missing another opportunity because he does have a lot of elephants, and he needs to add something behind them to deal with this, because he could he's almost at the trade. He could almost be doing the same thing in a more conventional manner, but these halberdiers are really scaring him away. Well, the thing is, Spring and Slam should be uh, out of gold at this point. Um, you know it takes gold to replenish your trade line. So that puts yeah. them in such a terrible position. Only 15 trade cards uh, between the two of them. How are you supposed to get gold if it takes gold to uh, to make the trade cards? Yeah, what you need is you need to take the middle, but you can see now that uh, Rubenstock's adding, of all things, Ballista Elephants to slow down uh, Slam and Spring's trade in the middle, which is exactly oh, what you need to do. Line. Uh, how many are you going to get out of Kill him! Kill him! Uh, actually, all of them. So actually, all of them. Come up on the second pass. Uh, now Nilly adding some more towers into the middle, taking control of that gold. Um, probably pretty GG now that Spring and Slam's team doesn't have any gold at all. Without any gold, the only thing you can make pretty much is Halberd here. Yeah, that's that's going to be very difficult for them. If you also look, they're also running low on food because their farms haven't been raided that much, but they've been having to use all that food into dealing with this these just few this little this small little base back here. So that's probably the most effective move I've ever seen anybody do in a deathmatch game. This is the most effective use of the Persian guard tower I've ever seen. Oh man. Persian guard towers are off. Please nerf. And look look at uh, Nelly's over in the south side, he's using those siege rams to take out buildings, which is so important to do because you can stop elephants, you can make them fight other units, but the siege rams, man, they, they take out buildings That's super fast. That's something I fast. noticed in uh, lower level games players never do is they'll always clean up the army of the other player but never really get anywhere because they never take out the buildings with rams. So if you're a newer player, definitely uh, adding siege rams is the biggest thing you can do to uh, help clean up your opponents in a hurry. Yep. I guess the ad main advantage with siege rams over trebuchets for the Persians is that they're faster, they're not as hard to micro, but also that uh, castle time can be used to make those war elephants. You can see Nelly, he's spamming a little bit more elephants, so that means that the army can be replenished in the most effective way possible. Yeah, it's absolutely one more thing to consider. So I think this game should be coming to a close. It might be a little... A little upset that this play worked from Nilly, although it was a brilliant move. But I just don't see how the players can possibly stay in this game. Um, as you can see, Ruben's not tributing gold over to his teammate. He doesn't have any gold. Um, I just see no way that they're going to be able to come back here. Yeah, you can see how uh, Slam, he's trying to keep his elephants alive. Because if, if he loses those elephants, he's not getting them back. But he just doesn't have the units to take it to cover them up. And that's the GG. And there's the GG on this game. Excellent play from Nilly. Uh, a few mistakes by Spring and Slam's team. Uh, they should have added more Siege early on, um, at least on Spring's part, to help finish Nilly. Nilly, by being able to defend, was able to maintain his castles, get up a sizable mass of War Elephants, and create a mega boom in his base. Uh, and also, when Slam was pushing in, again, not able to push into anything critical, such as the farm space of Rubenstock. And, uh, yeah, those were a few mistakes by on their team. Yep, and Spring, he was able to push into critical things. He could have pushed into that trade and definitely stopped that trade from ever getting up. But he just didn't. That was his mistake. <laughs> and, of course, obviously the Persian Guard Tower mistake, too. That was pretty bad, also. 
Anyways, thanks for watching. If you haven't seen any of Nobody AoE's videos, I highly suggest that you go to his channel and check him out. Alright, take care. See ya. Bye.